Good morning. Uh, are there any prayer requests? Let's stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a beautiful day, for sustaining us through the night and bringing us all together. Great is your name and how greatly to be praised. And we lift up special requests, Father, by prayer. We pray for, we pray for the other requests that uh, we just mentioned. Please hear our prayers, Father. We pray for this assembly. We pray that we can all edify and uh, serve one another with humility and love. We lift up your dear Son above all, Father, is our only hope. We praise Him. Through Him we ask. Amen. Miss Timothy. The other day when I was over at uh, Walter's house and and I, I guess Walter Jr. was there and I said, you'll never guess what my devotion would be if I wanted to speak on uh, Sunday for a little bit. But uh, it's going to be a little bit on First Timothy, the one that you read like two weeks ago. You read the whole six books. But I said, that has so many good points in there. So for the devotion, I thought I'd try to touch on some of those points and uh, your brother's going to add some things to it. And... Uh, just go over to some of those things and I'll use a little of Matthew also, the book of Matthew. And First uh, Timothy, chapter 1, in verse 3. As I urged you upon my departure for Macedonia, remo- remain on at Ephesus in order that you may instruct certain ones not to teach <coughs> doctrines thought that was interesting that after the salutations, Paul, an apostle of Jesus, and uh, grace, mercy, and peace, verse 3, he comes in. I charge you, I command you, to uh, uh, that you may instruct certain ones not to teach certain doctrines. Really, bang, right off the top. He's, Watch out for these heretics. This, this, this heretics and this false doctrine and so many things back then... Uh, of course, they had the circumcision, you know, the Judaizers, and they had the Nicolaitans, and so many different flavors of the Gnostics, and uh, uh, it was just right off, the, right off the top. He came out swinging, so to speak. He came out swinging. And said, "I said, don't, don't let these uh, these teachers." And he ends it in chapter six. Now keep the command that I have charged you. So back then there was lots of false doctrine and teachers, and that's how it's been throughout the ages. Like that, but um, and in verse fifteen and sixteen, brother Rick's not here, not yet. But and I always think of that verse sixteen. Think of me, verse fifteen and sixteen. This is a faithful statement, deserving all, full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am chief of all. Yet for this reason, I found mercy, in order that in me, as the foremost. Jesus, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. I'm using from the NASV, but I know in the King James it says uh, um, there would be a, a pattern. Not only was the chief of all sinners, but being the chief of all sinners, he gave a pattern that we could never, uh, that we could never uh, obtain. So if, if he could save Paul, he could save us. And I believe that's the context of of, uh, it's a faithful saying. Christ came, Jesus Christ came to save sinners whom I'm chief. There's four faithful sayings. Little memory work. There's four. Another one is in Timothy, uh, chapter five. I don't know. I don't know if I root it that much. I mean, it's, it's, it's God's word. I shouldn't say it like that. This is a faithful saying. Bodily exercise profits a little. But godliness profits a lot. Pro, 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 uh, profits a lot. In this world, course in the world to come and uh, bodily exercise I think it's taken out of context because that used to that's all I did I, I used to, when I was in my early 20s and things I would I would uh, do two hours of calisthenics lots of running more calisthenics more running sometimes I ran all day I didn't I had enough money uh, 
My parents paid my tuition and I could run all day. I did it for several years that I just ran, 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 godless, but ungodliness of just running. But I don't think it's talking about exercise. And you can correct me. I think it's talking about discipline. Touch not, taste not, you know, fasting and, 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 and body discipline, being austere. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't recognize that exercise would have a little advantage. It's, you don't want to be a couch potato and have a slow belly. But, I mean, it profits a little. But I think the exercise there is really talking about discipline, bodily discipline. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to, there's certain, that self-control is kind of, and I can take correction now that I, I read that, it's not original. But anyway, and then there was two others, I guess in Titus, a faithful saying, true statement, that uh, this is a faithful saying, if we deny him, he will deny us. If he was faithful, he is faithful and he can't deny himself. So hold on to the faith. And then the other one is in uh, Titus, again, it says, this is a faithful faithful statement. Be careful to maintain good works, for it is profitable for you. Be careful to maintain good works, for they are profitable for you. Anyway, that, those faithful sayings, there's only about four of them, like circumcision. There's a few of them. Circumcision or uncircumcision means nothing, but faith working through love, keeping the commandments, a new creation. It's, uh, you know, good phylacteries or things to go uh, early in the morning or not early morning it just part to to have them rotating in your mind a verse that i'm going to read now is the brother daniel read last week and uh it's exodus 34 5 you can turn to that exodus 34 5 moses is as uh Rose up early in the morning, went to Mount Sinai as the Lord commanded him, and he took the two stone tablets in his hand. In verse 5, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him as he called upon the name of the Lord. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, and slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness or mercy for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin, Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of the fathers of the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth century, fourth generations. And if I, you know, I, I mean, anyone could say if you wanted to make the, the Bible the theme in one verse, one verse, I think Exodus 34, verse 6, the Lord, Lord, merciful, gracious, and compassionate, abounding in Abundant in goodness and truth would be it. The, the Psalms quotes that so many times, basically it paraphrases that, and, and the, the prayers of Nehemiah and Ezekiel and Moses and, and the prophets, they always come back to that. Solomon. It seems that, that that the Lord talking about himself is, is, what, is what we, how, he, how, he, how we praise him or how we should think of him. The Lord, Lord, merciful, gracious, and uh, uh, patient. A long suffering, slow to anger, and uh, in in the beginning uh, of creation, I, I think uh, the God's plan for mankind in the garden. I can't say that right. The garden, in the garden, in the garden was that Adam and Eve would uh, serve as, so to speak, as a temple. Uh, to serve God as priest, priest and priestesses, being created in the image of God. And uh, I think that was the intent for paradise, for Adam and Eve. And then because of the fall of, by sin, God sought to restore the temple, uh, temple worship with, with uh, pure worship through Moses' covenant. And the covenant was, again, marred by sin. And then when Jesus, then God sent his son to uh, restore or uh, perhaps to, to show the true temple of, 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 of God, of himself, and to worship in spirit and truth. And that seemed to be the structure with a divine blueprint from, uh, from that. I don't know if, if that really is the way... God intended, but I think the temple worship is today, Christians are the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
all the members together. We're the bride of Christ and temple of the Holy Spirit. And we're so much different than... Um, then Moses is the stony heart. And uh, now we have Jeremiah 31 and Ezekiel 36 about from, from, from our heart. It comes out. And uh, from the fall of our parents in the garden, I think uh, I'm, not, I'm not able to go to the, the, the Bible studies on Monday night. I know I'm in the book of Romans, but in, uh, in Romans chapter 11, where it says, uh, don't forget or consider the goodness and severity of God or kindness, goodness and kindness of God. And uh, goodness if you continue in the faith and severity if you will discontinue. But the goodness and severity of God, the wrath of God. You know, we could talk about the love of God, the love of God, but the wrath of God, the anger of God. And, and I think you already had it in Romans 2. It says that the goodness or the kindness of God leads to... Anybody? The John, the goodness and kindness of God leads to... Repentance, right. And so when you see that, the repentance, repentance. And uh, how does the Psalms, the Psalms say, <clears throat> you know, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and wonderful works to the children of men. And he didn't even know about Jesus yet, right? I mean, it wasn't, it, it wasn't fulfilled yet. Things that they longed to look into. But oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and wonderful works to the children of men. And Jesus said to a generation there, just as in the days of Noah, there was eating and drinking and marrying, and then the flood came upon them. Robert? Suddenly, right? It came on quick. And that was, a, oh, that would have been terrible to be in, in. I mean, what kind of generation was in Jesus' time? What kind of generation, what kind of generation are we in today? Well, let's look in. And uh, what was in Jesus' time, Matthew 11, verses 16 to 19. Matthew 11, and verses 16 to 19. Matthew 11. Jesus says, <clears throat> But what should I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplace who call out to other children. Children sitting in the marketplace who call out to other children and say, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating or drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, behold, a, a gluttonous man and a drunkard, a friend of tax, ta tax gatherers, collectors, and sinners. Yet wisdom is uh, vindicated by her deeds. King James says wisdom is justified by her deeds. So, that's what it was in Jesus' time. And he gave that parable of a, or the story of a children calling to their friends. Okay, Let's see. It would be faithful. We would just say faithful and uh, Ephraim. And they're calling out to Titus and Nehemiah. Okay, they come over to see you. Faithful and and Ephraim come over to see Titus and Nehemiah. And they you know, had a good night's sleep and they have a good day. And they come over and they say, hey, I'm going to play with our friends. So they start singing and playing the flute. And dun -da -da, dun -da -da, they want them to play with them. And they get real happy and, and they start playing the flute. And Faithful is going and Ephraim is, is, is playing the tambourines. And, and Titus and Nehemiah, uh, they're just moaning and start crying. So then they say, ah, we got it. We'll start doing a... A tearful song. We start crying with you. <laughs> oh, we're singing. We start mourning. And they look, Titus, and, and they may all look, and they, oh, and they just run away and go in the house. They didn't want. They try to cheer them up by singing. Didn't work. They try to cheer them up or cons console them by, by weeping, and it didn't work. And it says, and, and they went away. And it says, wisdom is justified or vindicated by her children. Wisdom. So John came, eating and drinking, and in a common demon, Jesus, a friend of God. John was a steer, and he had all these, you know, tough laws, don't deny like that, and Jesus was more liberal and less severe. And the opposite, and they both, the religious leaders, they rejected both sides of it. And then they said this verse, 
Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. It's interesting. In the early Christian, early Christian commentary on that, and this is something new for me, maybe some of you brothers and sisters knew this, but in the early Christian commentary, wisdom is vindicated by her, uh, wisdom is vindicated by her children. Wisdom is vindicated by her thing. That's you and Michael. <laughs> The tongue twister, the John you can't say. You got me saying that, but anyway, the the early Christians would say that Jesus represents wisdom. Christ Himself is the wisdom, and vindicated or justified is the ones who suffered persecution and martyred, because Jesus and John both were were martyred, and the ones it's justified. Jesus is justified by her children by the persecutions and sufferings they went through. I never heard that, but that's what they say. The early Christians, there's three of them that say that that's what it's talking about, for what it's worth. That, that, that that's the, uh, that, that's the, 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 it's, wisdom is justified by her children. And, you know, I mean, there is, uh, I would say strive, strive to enter, agonize, uh, Christians for 2,000 years have suffered rejection and persecution by grappling or grasping for the wisdom that Jesus uh, spoke about. And in fact, Jesus said, uh, and John the Baptist, they came this and that, and then he said, but uh, since then the gospel is preached and they violently come and, and, and grab the kingdom, violently seize it. Brother Duane gave a lesson on uh, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob... When he was wrestling with the angel, he, uh, he was losing. So the angel, I mean, well, he was putting up a, a good wrestling match, but the angel just touched him in the socket, in the thigh. And uh, that would have been the end of it for me, or I guess a lot of people. So I, I give up. But he didn't. He kept holding on, as Dwayne was saying. He held on, even though the angel was stronger. He held on. That's violently grasping it. We should hold on. And, and that's that's uh, another one of the early Christian, but uh, I think that's a good comparison of how you hold on, and uh, uh, even and don't don't give up. I mean, that's the that's the uh, I think that's the that's the understanding of that of uh, wisdom is justified by your children and, and holding on. And so, what about this generation? Great opportunity for the gospel. And the brothers went, Aaron and Darren on here. And I apologized to Brother Aaron last night. And I called him. They called me in for work. And I said, I was really looking forward to going with you to Fayetteville or wherever you went, Walter Jr. And I said, I was looking for, that was what I was looking forward to. But anyway, uh, you know, great opportunity for the gospel. So when somebody wins the lottery, you know, I, I see... Well, I don't see it now, but I used to see the Mazdas all the time, the TV, live stream TV and, and all that. And they had it for the buffet. But when someone wins the lottery or something, worldly people win the lottery, what do they do? They get kangaroo shoes, and they jump, and they scream, and they hug everybody. They're a millionaire, Leroy. Never have to work again. They are screaming. They are screaming. And uh, on the game shows, usually the game shows when the – you know, whatever the price is right or whatever. The, the, the women, not just the women, but you can win a new vehicle. And they, wow, they hug and they scream and they, they really get excited about, really, they got a car, a new car, a Lexus for life. You know, they think for life. And uh, they scream. And then a ball game, that was my God, the ball game. They scored a touchdown. The Rams won the game. We just jump up, jump up, scream, shout, let it be happen. Okay, what did Jesus say? Jesus said to count the cost. Ken Miller was in jail for two years for getting place for a young woman just to get her away from a lesbian thing. This man was in prison for five years for not carrying a rifle. Praise the Lord for that. And what should we do? Well, we'll get them, get those communists. No, we shall jump up. We've been person. What does Jesus say in John six twenty three? I'm getting excited. John six twenty three. He said, "Let me read it." And I haven't been persecuted like you uh, or, or Ken Miller, but uh, in Luke six twenty three. Forgive me. Luke six. It says, Jesus is speaking. If I can find this here. 
Blessed, verse 22, blessed are those when men hate you and, and ostracize you and cast insults to you and spurn your name as evil for the sake of the Son of Man. Be glad in that day and leap for joy. For re your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way their fathers used to treat the prophets. One of the early Christians said something like what, what Dwayne was saying about Jacob, if you come into Alexandria, about Jacob uh, wrestling with Egypt, uh, with uh, the angel, whoever that was, was saying that you can actually conquer God. You can conquer God. I mean, nobody can, can go against God, but you can conquer God by holding on to him like that. You can, you can, you can overcome. You can, you can, just like that. And, and you can hold on like Jacob held on. And bless you, brother, for doing that. Five years in prison. I would have just prayed, Lord, take my life in here. I don't think I could take five years. And, and Ken Miller, he did two years. And, and, and so I just, but don't give up. But leave for joy. We should never wish. Mia is venganza. Yo, capa, yo pagare. Dice el Señor. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I don't know if my Spanish is good, Yolanda. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And I will repay. Anyway, I get excited about it. I get excited about it. But anyway. Okay. That is uh, jump for joy, as do the prophets of old. I appreciate Brother Danny. I love him and, and, uh, and Darren. But when someone goes by and says obscene words to them, what do they say? Bless you. That right, Daniel? They, bless you. You have a great, you know, bless you. They say bless you. Instead of cursing them, well, wait, you're going to get yours. Wait till the judgment day. You'll, they say bless you, bless you. And that's what we need to do. We're, our generation is any different than any other generation. It's an evil generation. And we should count the cost. And, um, you know, in that temple that I mentioned, the temple, Jesus is the true cornerstone and the true foundation. And he's, he's the... Uh, okay, I'm closing up here. Let's see. Um, when... Uh, when... Can we look at uh, John, uh, rather Luke 16? And... Second Tim, uh, First Timothy chapter two. Some of the verses I didn't, I didn't uh, bring up. And says, <clears throat> what do we do in this temple? First Timothy two. We pray. Pray for who? Pray for everybody. Kings and authorities. Pray for Mr. Trump, Mr. Um, Pence. So who died yesterday or two days ago? I heard Sarah told me early in the morning. Robert, you know who died? I said no. I don't know. I don't listen to Sarah. But who died? Um, Ginsburg died. The Supreme Court Justice Ginsburg, and she was a very wicked woman as far as. You know, for the homosexuals and all that things. But what's our attitude towards her? Should we rejoice that we got rid of a bad, wicked person? No, our attitude is another one has died that will probably, if she hadn't repented, I mean, eternal, eternal, eternal punishment. And so when someone, a wicked person's die, we shouldn't gloat and say, oh, good. No, we should say, we should mourn, almost mourn, saying, this is terrible. This is terrible. I mean, that's, okay, we pray for all people uh, and uh, give thanks for all and uh, that we may live a quiet and peaceful life with all godliness and honesty. My wife's favorite verse. She, every time we have a devotion, she'll, she usually throws that in. God, she loves that verse. I love it too. Uh, chapter 3, God was manifest in the flesh. We know that. Justifying the spirit. And just doing that. Uh, Chapter 4, 1 Timothy 4, beware of false teachers. And we have that by their fruits, you'll know them. Chapter uh, 5, 1 Timothy says, lay hands on no man suddenly so that we don't partake of their sins. So, uh, and, 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 and also in 1 Timothy 5, 22, yeah, it, it, that's what it is, that we partake of his sins. And so, anyway, that's... Uh, I will close with one story that I've told before, but I think it's a, uh, um, it's a true story. And uh, I think Buddy likes it, but uh, some of you may have not heard it. Maybe you didn't hear it, Brother John, but um, it was, and I'm not advocating golf. It was by a golfer in 1960. His name was Roberto DiVincenzo. You remember this story, Leroy? No? And it was in the 60s, a golfer. I mean, you can't do it. I can't do it to the glory of God. I, I'm against, you know, I mean, that's, it's okay. But he was a golfer, and I don't know what, if he was from Argentina. He's passed away. 
I don't know if he was Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical, what he was. But uh, Roberto Di Vincenzo. And so anyway, he won a tournament in Georgia, one of the big golf tournaments, and he won a $50,000 check or something like that. That was, the, that was the money prize back then. Today it's probably 500000 Who knows what it is. And so when he was walking back to the clubhouse, a young girl approached him, kind of crying, and said that, congratulations, Mr. Vincenzo. You had a great, great day. It was a great day for you. And, and, uh, but it's not a good day for me. He said, oh, what's the matter, sweetie? What's, what's your thing now? Well, I have a young child that's in the hospital, and we don't know if the baby's going to live. It's really a tough thing. And, and he says, anything I can do? So we just, my husband and I, we don't have the money. So he took the check, and he signed it. He endorsed it. Take it. Sure, it's 50000 So he goes back to Argentina, and then uh, a few weeks later, he comes back to the States playing another golf tournament. And someone from the PGA Golf Association comes up to him and says, Roberto, Roberto, do you remember when you were in Georgia a few weeks ago that uh, this young girl came up to you in the parking lot and told you about um, uh, you know, her problems and all that, and you gave her a check? He says, oh, yeah. And he says, uh, she was lying. She was a scam. She, none of that was true. And he looks serious at the guy, the PGA, and he says, you mean it wasn't true? He said, no. She didn't have a sick child? He said, no. He said, well, praise the Lord. That's the best news I've ever heard. And he walked away. That's how we should do. Don't let the left, don't let it sweat in our right hand, as Brother Buddy was saying. What we give, don't let, how do you say it? Don't let it sweat in your right. And we should do that. Don't let it, when you give to someone, just just give it. We, we have eternal, eternal things we're, we're shooting. Go ahead. Amen. Yeah, and that's, uh, let, let's give and let's, uh, you know, uh, be like John Wesley. When we die, we don't have anything in a bank account, right? We gave it all away. I mean, that's, that's right. The Lord be magnified. A any comments and corrections? Yeah. I Thank you, Robert. I appreciate a lot of what you shared there. And uh, I, I am still puzzled, like, that that's... That story or that thing that Jesus said about what shall I liken this generation to? They're like children at a marketplace. Um, and then he ends up with saying that thing. Some, some translation said, yet wisdom is justified by her children, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I, I, when you started in and when you said what the early Christian commentary said, I said, I, I have puzzled over that for, my wife and I have talked about it, I've puzzled, like, I, okay, I get it when he said, I think I, I think I see the comparison when he says, it's like children playing to other children and saying, we played the flute, you didn't dance, we played a dirge, you didn't sing, or you didn't weep, um, like comparing that to, John the Baptist came with one message, you know, abstaining from eating and drinking, and you say he has a demon. Jesus came with, so you could say like maybe not a different message, but a, but a, but a different approach or or tactic. And he he ate and drank, and you say he's a he's a glutton. You can't be, you can't be convinced. But but then I, and then you said what you said, but I I'm still a little puzzled. What? What are they saying that it means when it says, yet wisdom is... So, okay. Wisdom is just vindicated by her deeds. Oh. Um, yeah. I can appreciate that even though I, I find it uh, I find the wording a little, a little hard to comprehend. Still, <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> thanks, thanks for those things you shared. I don't really have much more to add, but appreciate it. I guess, Duane, I just always thought, I thought there was, I thought there was a parallel between that. Um, we sang a, we sang a sad song, but you didn't cry. We sang a happy song, but you didn't dance. 
a, th- a parallel between that and when Jesus says John the Baptist came um, fasting and the, the Son of Man came eating, eating and drinking. Like you're not, you're just not happy either way. Um, and then, um, and the wisdom is justified over children would just be like, um, you know, someone someone could disagree with uh, uh, someone's methods that don't seem to make sense, but in the end, the f- you know, uh, whether it's in gardening, you know, someone could say, oh, cages work better than steaks, but the the, the, the children, the fruit, the thing that comes forth, or, or you could say in a family, like somebody could say, oh, we think... We don't think uh, we don't think spanking is any good. We believe in having people put their nose in the corner or something. Well, or we believe in you know whatever whatever the method is, re- re- rewarding them or not rewarding them or making them work or or educating them, and then the the children will justify. Look at the children, and they'll they're going to tell you what the, whose methods were, which method was right. Um, that's what I think of those things. Oh, and I, sorry, and then I don't quite, I don't, I, I think there could be multiple things that would be true about that bodily exercise thing, but I, I just tend to think, like, those are, those are literal English words, like bodily is carnal, exercise just means to, to do something, exercise yourself in any, any type of exercise, um, but, but, but today we have, when we say the word, there's lots of words that are like this, but you, you say a word that that has a, a big broad meaning but but currently we have a more specific meaning so these days when you just say exercise it's it's people tend to think oh that's like robert was talking about running swimming weightlifting uh exercise and it I, I i there's no i don't think there's any reason to think that that would have been the use of the word <clears throat> it would have been the literal the literal word of the literal meaning of the of the word exercise so just carnal carnal whatever it is i think it's possibly a good interpretation what what robert was saying it could it could just be talking about um uh working your working your job working on your house working on your field doing exercising your your body to uh to 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 do things like the profiting carnal profit earthly Earthly exercise, earthly things like these things don't really profit. Like it's saying, uh, it should be supernatural, <clears throat> not carnal exercising. Anyway, I just when we hear that word exercise, we immediately think of the modern usage, but it has a literal uh, meaning, which is probably more likely what the author was intending.
God.